Dallas. Hey, good evening, everyone. Dr. Sean here from Project Forgive. How are you doing? Tonight's our usual night of lectures. Tonight's lecture is about when you're struggling, when everything feels like a struggle. And I thought it was so ironic. I was actually getting ready to go over to the lake house. We have a little lake house by where we live. You know, this little dilapidated area that's a little bit lakefront. We've had it for about 15 years and I get, maybe 10 years. I get a lot of joy being there. So my husband says, well, I wanna go. I'm like, okay. So we pack up in the car, get over there and I left my freaking phone, okay? So I said, well, it's meant to be coming back to the office with all my props and all that. Even coming on today has felt like a struggle, right? And um, it just it's just very interesting how that works. So I got a lot of props tonight. Hey, I see you guys are showing up. Hi, Nadine. Hey, Connie. Toti's in the house. Marlene. Not sure what those links are, but I'll take a look at them. You might be doing that. Sam Sutton, that's wonderful. Hey, Mary. Hi, Mariela. Buenas noches. Um, okay, tonight's about when life, when everything feels like a struggle. And um, it's, there's no coincidence with the topics that I pick. And uh, I usually pick something that I have some knowledge around in this realm of communication, which is my expertise. And, um, and then something I want to expand some of my own personal knowledge of making the unconscious conscious, making the unconscious conscious. I see Alicia. Hey, Sammy Lee, hello. Hi, Wanda, Jill's in the house. So a couple things before we get started. I've got some good stuff tonight that I'm actually excited about. Um, got to thank our sponsors. Our font sponsor tonight actually coincides with life being a struggle. Her name is Vanessa Haloum. She's a dear friend and client of mine. Her page is Healthy Positive Energy. And everything I mention, I'll be sure to put up in the links um, when I'm done with the live. She's been doing something that really resonated for me. She's been putting up 10 minute dance meditations. And it doesn't matter what religion you are, or your spiritual philosophy. It's all about movement and moving your body. Um, and she's doing these 10 minute meditations that are just breathtakingly beautiful. And I've been doing them. So I'll put the link up for that for you to check it out. That is also something that can help with flow. Because one of the things that I see with struggle is about flow, right? Are you, let, are you going with the flow? With how crazy it is right now, it's hard to go with the flow. Even the stupid mass conversation is painful. It is so painful. It's, um, it's politicized. I don't care what side of the fence you're on with the mass. I don't care. Your choice. You get to choose what you want to do. The messaging, the communication with it has been so strife with dilemma and struggle. You know, what do you do if you have five, six, seven-year-olds that can't wear masks and can't get vaccinated? So there's, there's a lot of struggle around just even the mask conversation, right? So I just thought, oh, that's so appropriate about what's going on. All right, a couple of things tonight. If you're inspired by our store, check it out. We do have masks on there. And of course, we're gonna stop selling masks. We're gonna just make it a bonus gift with our other products that we're, we're starting to sell. We finally got our labels for our Forgiveness Essential Oil. It shows up to you backwards. This stuff is expensive. And um, we found a cost-efficient way to sell them. Someone tonight's going to win a prize. I'll do the prizes at the very end. And you're going to get our first labeled essential oil. They'll be up in our store probably this weekend. Hailey's on vacation this week. And um, we're going to send you a couple masks. We're going to send you our white one. And our black one, they both say kindness is contagious. So someone's going to win that tonight, and I'll tell you how to win. My lectures usually last about 15, 20 minutes, sometimes up to 30, depending upon the questions. Okay, I see you guys are showing up. It's nice to see you, too. Wonderful. Um, we do have emails that go out. I'll make sure I put up a link if that's something we're really focused on, the conversation of joy. We also have a Joy is a Habit Facebook group. If all else fails, finding one moment a day to just find some joy, you no, know, regardless of how angry you are, angry you are, upset you are, down you are, sad you are, it doesn't matter. Finding just those precious moments of joy can really impact your mental health. And with that said, as I dive into this topic tonight, I need to say I'm not a medical doctor. So if you are being treated for depression, anxiety, bipolar issues, um, please see your doctor. These are just some tips I'm going to give tonight to help with when things feel like they're really, really struggling or you're really, really struggling. Okay. 
Um, if you're new, tell us, because we love to welcome you. Our community is so exquisite, and people will just love you up. And um, if you're inspired by stars, woohoo! throw us some stars. We use that for folks that can't afford our services, even though our services are pretty low cost. And uh, we'll be highlighting our workshops that are starting in June that will be off Facebook. The main reason being is because the work that we do is pretty darn vulnerable and very raw. And when you have people just popping in on Facebook, it's really hard to get really comfortable in your skin and share some things, right? Okay. All right. Let's see if there's anything else I need to say before I dive into struggling. Okay. No, I think that's good. Okay. This is about getting back your spark. If you're struggling, I just want to remind you, you're not lazy, you're not hopeless, you're not loose, useless, and you are so normal. And these uphill battles or this struggling can feel like you're carrying rocks. So tonight's conversation is about how can you release some of those rocks that are in your pockets in some cases. <laughs> it might be bricks. <laughs> I've had my own version of bricks, right? <laughs> um, yeah, totally with you. Okay, so I just want to remind you that struggle is not permanent. The goal today is to short circuit it and not prolong it, to short circuit it, okay? And here's the thing, we don't, when we're struggling, we don't want to indulge our brain and our neurolo neurological pathways in the struggle for too long. It's very healthy to immerse yourself and your emotions because that's an indication you're aware of what's happening with you. You're making the unconscious conscious. And it's okay to feel the need to take a day or two, sometimes a week, to really listen to yourself, maybe even listen to sad music. When I'm struggling, I might listen to sad music or watch a sad show that I know is gonna let the tears come because I might feel bottled up. That's just part of my own self-care routine, right? And um, reminder, this is really temporary. So I want, I want to bring to focus some of the conversations that can, can come up during this. Sometimes when we're struggling, we might be struggling with life is not fair or getting immediate gratification. Life is certainly not fair. When, a fa when something goes in our favor, we don't complain that life's not fair. We're just glad that it's in our favor, right? And when... This immediate gratification conversation is a very young conversation. I don't know if you've ever heard of these studies. This was back when, it was in the 70s. I can't remember the researcher's name. He did the marshmallow test. Have you heard of the marshmallow test? This is when little four-year-olds, because four is usually, four to five is the breaking point for immediate gratification and actually being able to elongate, I guess that's my word tonight, elongate, um, lessening immediate gratification. Like if you're really hungry, waiting an extra 20 minutes. Like not having, like I'm hungry, I'm gonna shovel food in my mouth right this second. Well, what they did with the kids with the marshmallows is they negotiated with them. They said, okay, here's a marshmallow, a little Lucy or whatever. You can eat this little marshmallow right now or you can wait five minutes and get five marshmallows, okay? For a four-year-old or a five-year-old, that's a tough decision, okay? And it was very uncommon for a four- to five-year-old be able to wait for five minutes to get five marshmallows, okay? And there's something about our brains, our amygdala brains, that part of our brain that's fight or flight, and sometimes we really need immediate gratification. So it's really important to, when things aren't going and you're going through the struggle, like, okay, I'm not gonna shovel a marshmallow in my mouth right this minute. This is gonna happen later today or that's gonna happen later today. I can withstand in my own personal development and maturity that I'm not gonna have immediate gratification. Saying things like that to me really help and soothe me. And the other one is the conversation of shooting on yourself. And it, I like it because, excuse my language, it kind of sounds like when you shit on yourself, pardon my language, shooting on yourself. I remember first hearing that at a Jack Canfield um, workshop years ago. He's a personal development coach. I don't know if he, he did Chicken Soup for the Soul. I don't know if you remember Jack Canfield. I love Jack Canfield. He's got great inspiring posts. And he came up with this idea. If you start shooting on yourself, well, I should be eating healthier. I should go take a shower. I should 
Um, I shouldn't feel so angry at this person. All these shoulds are just crap. <laughs> they really are. And it's actually just something that you've trained your brain to do. And he came up with this phrase, cancel, 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 saying it three times. So whenever I'm saying a thought in my brain that's shooting on myself or that's like harming myself, like I'm criticizing my own self, I'll say, I literally will say, cancel, cancel, cancel. I'll say it in my mind, my mind's eye. Because it's like, no, that, I ain't doing that to myself. I've got enough of that in my life. Can anyone relate to that? All right. <laughs> Hi, I see you guys are showing up. Hi, Maria. Hi, Joyce. And um, so what are some things that you can start paying attention to in the struggle? Reminding yourself that it's not permanent. This is just temporary. Watching out what you're saying out loud. What is coming out of your mouth out loud? Because it's almost like it's reinforced when you say it to other people. And I would assert that's what's happening with the masks. Even with my husband, I'm like, can we just not talk about masks anymore? We're going to do what we're going to do. People are going to do what they're going to do. Let people choose and have their life and choosing to get all upset about it. Whatever side of the fence you're on serves no one. It actually just makes me feel worse. So I'm going to honor people's choices and let them do what they need to do. I'm going to still make my choices based on what, how I feel, and that's good enough for right now because that's what's going on. Elizabeth, perfect words, this too shall pass. That's another phrase that I love too. I have another one that I love. It's actually a Bible verse. Please know Project Forgive is non-religious, non-partisan. I happen to, you know, have God as my deity. And I have the Bible phrase, be still and know, which is from Psalm. That soothes me and comforts me. Actually, here, I'll just show you. It's up on my wall. My daughter gave that to me because she knows it's one of my favorite Bible verses. It keeps moving because I just got this little Fergie plaque. But this is on here, Joy is a Mantra of Mine, Be Still and Know, is actually my version of This Too Shall Pass. I love that you said that, um, Elizabeth. So saying those repetitive things in my mind really work. What about the notion of asking for help? Do you know statistically a large proportion of adults globally struggle with asking for help. What does it mean to you when you ask for help? Are you better off doing it yourself? It'll get done right yourself. Actively think about what are some things you can ask for help with, right? What are some things you can do? And um, one of mine today was dinner. You know, um, what do you want to have for dinner? I don't know. He says, I don't know either, because usually I cook. And um, I just too much, I did, actually I was struggling so much today I didn't want to cook. <laughs> so it's actually perfect that we're doing a lecture on struggling. And uh, I says, well, what about Five Guys? Because I love Five Guys. We haven't been there in a while. And he says, well, this neighborhood bar, we have a neighborhood bar by us. He says, maybe we can get hamburgers there. I says, because well, if they have the special, because sometimes they have $5 burgers on Mondays or Tuesdays. So I said, great, would you take care of that? So while I'm sitting here doing the live, He's taking care and figuring out where we're going to get burgers. I know it seems small. I'm usually the one that does all that stuff so that I feel over-responsible a lot. I really have a hard time asking for help. Can anybody relate to that? So just like little things, start little, little things, start asking for help. I saw something that I thought was great food for thought, and it had one, two, three, four things listed. Whatever I say, just so you know, I'm going to put in the notes when I'm done. It said, here's the food for thought. It had four things. Past results. What have you done in the past when you're struggling that worked? Why? What hasn't worked? Why? Those are good questions. Reactions. What have you done that others notice? And I think about my reactions. I look at my how I set boundaries. Um, I'm looking at my anger, my reactive anger. Um, and I'm seeing as I'm unpacking it that it's linked to old abandonment, old, like looking at, I'm unpacking my anger because I think anger is a very healthy thing. Boundaries are very healthy. But when you use boundaries as a weapon, it actually defeats the purpose because the the goal of boundaries is to bring you closer, not to punish someone for not doing what you said. Let me say that again, because that is critical. Boundaries, and some of the reasons we struggle with feeling good, 
is because we keep setting boundaries, but they're not working. Because we might be using our boundaries as a whipping lash or punishment. That's not the intention of boundaries. Boundaries are, the intention of boundaries is to bring us together. I'm setting a boundary so you know what I need or what I want. So there isn't that pain there so we can actually connect. Make sense? Okay. Yeah, I love it, Doreen. You're spot on. Let me just see what you guys are Yep, Nadine, I'm so with you. And I love that you're saying that. I hate asking but get upset when they say they will do it, but they don't. That is really important information. Now, depending on the relationship with the person, you could be, you know, hey, so-and-so, I need you to do this. And they say, sure, I will. But you know what? Can I be really honest with you and tell you what I'm concerned about? And they're going to say, sure, what? Well, you said that you, let, you know, I've asked you to do things before and you don't follow up. And it, what happens is I end up feeling not very important to you. So can I ask you another question around it? And they're going to say, sure. Say, by when will you do that for me? Is it something you can do today? Is it something you can do in the next two hours? Can you commit to a time? It might seem like you're doing too much heavy lifting, but the truth is you're actually training people and setting boundaries for how you want to be treated. And it's actually a really good thing to train people because we've trained them using your example, Nadine, if I can, that we ask you to do something, they don't do what they say, and then we just go, oh, well, maybe we throw a temper tantrum, maybe we say, you're a jerk, I can't believe you didn't do what you said you're gonna do, you have no integrity, blah, blah, blah. And we're still giving the overall message that it's okay. And um, that's just some food for thought in the moment. Let me see if anybody else is saying anything. Yep, I'm with you, Wendy. Wrong friends, right? Time to find some new friends. Yeah, uh, beautiful. I love that you guys are saying things. Let's see, sweet, watching. Yep, see if there's anything I gotta grab and say. Yeah, Rainy, be still and know. Uh, yeah, perfect. Okay, so back to where I'm at. Let's see. Yeah, and it might not change anything, Nadine. And there's something empowering about being in action for yourself. There's something empowering about that, right? Yeah, and Kim, you're so spot on with toxic relationship. I have a different take on toxic relationship because the one thing that's true in toxic relationships is that you're a part of it too. I'm a part of it too. So I like to look at that making the unconscious conscious, like what part of me is behaving with toxicity that's creating this cluster bump, right? That's just creating this cluster. So there's accountability, because we're only responsible for ourselves. Because we could write everybody off as toxic, and what if we come from really toxic family systems, right? And that would mean you never contact any of your family, and that didn't work for me. So I really dove into that conversation, where am I toxic? Hence why I'm looking at my reactive anger right now, okay? Just food for thought. All right, sometimes, and okay, so where did I go? Reactions. Now, relationships. How, this is the four questions I asked. Past results. What have you done in the past that's worked and why? Why hasn't it worked and why? That, Nadine, that would be a great, great question that maybe you haven't gone vulnerable enough to say, hey, I'm noticing in the past you haven't followed through, so I'm concerned, you know? And that would be a new behavior in reactions and past relationships. Okay. Um, feelings. Where do you feel the most stress and resistance in your body and in your life? And mine comes from asking people to do things, asking for help. That's a very stressful place. Not trusting that someone's going to do it. Thank you for the stars. I just see some stars. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. And Jay, you know, th this is like this comment here. Like, I just got to call it out. It says, obviously, you know nothing about narcissism. Actually, truthfully, it's very narcissistic to come on a live and make comments when you're not part of the community. And we've done so many talks on narcissism. We've talked about this so many times and so many insights about it. These are just bits and pieces in the moment. And they're very high-level conversations. And I just would encourage anyone who comes on the live, if you're disagreeing, go. This is not for you. It's okay. Not everything is for everybody. And when you make comments like that, it creates just safety for everyone else on the live. So please don't do that, okay? If you got upset, ask a question. That's a perfect example of toxicity. 
is when you blame someone when you don't think they're getting you. It's a perfect example of that and a perfect example of why struggling can occur. When you communicate like that, it hurts people. And you're so spot on, Doreen. Hurt people really do hurt people. Yeah. And Nadine, you know, you were asking, why do you think it's so hard to ask for help? A lot of it in my world as an academic comes from our family systems. If you grew up in a family system where your needs weren't met, you grew up in a narcissistic home. I grew up with two very narcissistic parents and drug addiction and rageaholicism. And um, it's really hard to ask for help. It's a stressor. It creates stress and struggle to ask for help. But I keep practicing, right? You can keep practicing. Um, the other thing about struggling is that validation, that knowing you're not alone. And what are some activities or things you can do? So many of you know from being here repeatedly, my daughter lost her baby. She was six months pregnant. She lost her baby in February. And um, I've been with her three times since then. The most travel I've done since COVID hit. And um, one of the things that we do not to deny the feelings, not to deny the upset, not to deny any toxicity, we don't, not none of that. It's really actively, consciously choosing to find some things to laugh about, okay? Like, have you ever done this? Like, just like if you're really sad, maybe you'll watch a sad movie to help the emotions, to help yourself emote. We look, watch comedians. When I'm with Autumn, we're like, when I'm with Autumn, I'm like, that's my daughter, be like, what comedian can we watch tonight? And we've learned the comedians that we like, the ones that, like the real swearing and the real negative ones, we're not into that, both of us, which is really cool. So we have like the same kind of sense of humor, although she's in her 30s and I'm in my 50s. We found some common ground. And just to be able to be distracted by choice for 45 minutes or an hour has done wonders for our relationship, for our feelings of loss around Easton, the baby's name, and um, has helped us move through a lot of that. The, the, the part of it that if someone's just coming on and saying, oh, if you're feeling sad, watch a comedy, that's taking it out of context, okay? Just like taking narcissism out of context from this talk. Because it's not about denial. It's okay to make a conscious choice. It's okay to make a conscious choice to find something that brings you joy. One thing that brings you joy. And um, I saw this quote, you guys have seen this quote, you can tell it moves me to share this, um, to actually think that you're worth consciously choosing to give yourself something good in the midst of struggle, right? And uh, one of the quotes I saw, when everything feels like an uphill struggle, just think of the view from the top. That inspired me, I kinda like that one, okay. <laughs> um, those mantras, the feeling is temporary, other stuff. I've been doing little things to help with the struggle. Like, I just started Spanish lessons. Um, estoy aprendiendo español. I can understand quite a bit of Spanish, especially written Spanish. I have a hard time conjugating verbs. And um, I thought, what if I started taking Spanish lessons? Maybe once a week or getting some books. Like, this is something I did. I'll look at the, the note, the comments here in just a second. I got on eBay and I found some books written in Spanish and English to really help me um, before I go to sleep. Antes de irme a dormir. I'm practicing my pronunciation. So the books are in both English and Spanish. And that's something that as soon as I see those books, I feel happy. You know, like, oh, I'm going to spend five minutes and play with Spanish a little bit, right? That's something that brings me joy. Other things, let's see, I wrote down a few. Lake House, um, the house that I go to a lot. So glad that summer's here. Oh, you started French in January, that's perfect. Here, let me go and see what you guys are saying. Let's see what you're saying. Laughter is the best medicine, Joyce. You're so, oh, you guys are so kind about the losses. Yeah. Sandra, I'm so with you. Same thing with me. That's why I'm really working on where am I harming people and not be, and being unconscious about it, right? Okay, Nadine, that's great about the kids and laughing. You're spot on. Laughter is magic, Maria. Thank you, Therese. Just looking. Abigail, you're spot on. You are so spot on. 
about that emotions are our compass. Our emotions are there to tell us, give us clues and hints about what's really going on for us. Sometimes though, when the emotions are so intense, we kind of shut them down or shut them off. We shut them off with smoking, drugs, too much food, busyness, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you, Nadine, on the comedy. Same with you. Yep, totally got it. Beautiful. Okay, let's see if there's anything else I got to see what you're saying. Yeah, when you're asked, Car Kaylee, I'm so with you, Kaylee Ann. When you're asking for, and I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. When you ask for help, some think you're looking for a handout or, you know, a pity party or something. I'm imagining that's what you're, you're trying to say. And that's one of the things to look at. Am I asking, am I going to the, the hardware store to get milk or am I going to the grocery store to get milk? Because sometimes we ask for help from people that could never help us. They just don't have the skills or the tools. That's another thing to consider. And that always comes here. It always comes from within, right? Yeah. Um, another thing that I ask myself when I'm really struggling is what is my next right step? Because sometimes it feels so overwhelming, you just don't want to do anything. You ever been there? It's just like, I don't even want to work today, right? What is my next right step? What is the next right thing that would serve me? Well, I did a couple of things that my next right steps that serve me. One of the things I do is I send little notes in the mail to people that I love. And in reciprocity here, I'm trying to get it off the floor because I packed up to go to the lake house and ended up coming back. All right, so, no, I guess I left it over here. I send little notes to people, just like thinking of you, I love you, you know, I saw you post this or whatever, I just want to let you know I felt so much love for you. And, um, and what happens naturally in the cycle of reciprocity is I get stuff back. Like, I just got this in the mail, a little package. This came in the mail today. And it's a dragonfly charm from a really dear friend of mine. Her name is Lisa Marie Platsky. And it says, this little dragonfly will bring lightness into your day. It will help bring you joy as you travel along life's ways. This dragonfly reminds me to be strong and courageous too. Keep a positive attitude in all that you do. And look at the little, look at the little dragonfly there. Now I'll probably put it on my little, I have a little table with all my tchotchkes that I just love that bring me joy and I'm um, getting this note I dropped the letter this is and I do the same thing here's what the letter looks like well, it's just a little note and then there's just a little message and it says dear Dr. Sean thinking of you love Lisa Marie just that alone this has made my day and I know that when I do it for others, I'm making their day as well. So even, and there's so much research around if you're struggling, that if you take a couple minutes to focus on someone else, I'm not talking codependency. I'm not talking taking care of people. I'm talking about just making a conscious choice for a couple minutes, I'm gonna write a little note to someone to make their day. There's something exquisite about that. Let's see, I put more stuff. Uh, so I am I love this purse. I'm going to show it to you. It's all ratty, okay? I've had it for about a year. It's a clock purse, okay? It's something that really, really brings me joy. One of the things I've noticed during COVID is I haven't been able to find this freaking purse anywhere. I've been able to always get it online. I've bought the same purse for years. I haven't been able to find it. And I just found it on Posh, okay? It's twice as much as I normally pay for it. But I needed a new purse, and I just got it in the mail today. Okay, here's my new purse. I got to put my stuff in my new purse. Woohoo! And even spending, like making a decision in struggle, spending even three minutes. Oh, I'm gonna look and see if my purse is around today. I'm gonna see if there's, you know, that purse brings me so much joy. It's hard to carry around a ratty purse. Let me see if I get lucky today, and then it'll bring me extra. And I got lucky last week Wednesday, and the purse just arrived today. Other thing too, like today, I've got a little jacket on because I was outside. I put on a dress. Look, you just here's my dress. I put on this beautiful, gorgeous dress today. Consciously choosing to bring me a little joy with a dress. When I dress up, I feel good. I don't always feel like dressing up. I like wearing my sweatpants and my comfortable jackets. 
And um, there was no reason for me to put on a dress today except to bring me joy. One little conscious choice to bring me joy. Other thing I'm note like what I'm gonna do this week, like, okay, what are some little things I can do that bring me joy? Um, I haven't bought new makeup in frickin' forever, okay? And I've noticed that the makeup I have, you know, <laughs> gets old. I haven't bought makeup probably since prior to COVID. My eyes are watering, okay? <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, it's because my makeup is too old. So I'm gonna make a conscious effort this week to just revel in getting some new lipstick revel in getting some new mascara those little tiny things that actually bring me joy and like putting together a new makeup pack you know sorry guys i know this isn't your thing i know some women are going to be able to relate to that because it feels good it feels good to me to be able to do that let's see ah sunny people notes i think that's about it let's see anything you want to say before i go is there anything you're doing anything you're doing that would benefit others that are listening here. Irene, <laughs> you're so funny. You're so cute. Yep, the cute tip with the with the the um, with the lipstick. I've done that with my favorite lipsticks when I haven't been able to find it. Let's see. Oh, pink hair, Abigail. I got it. And you know what? Every time I see somebody with a very flamboyant or different color, I just say, I say to them, I love your hair. I love how expressed you are. It actually brings me joy to see you with pink hair. Got it? I'm sure you've experienced that, right? Same thing with my clock purse. When I go out and about with my clock purse, everybody talks to me about this purse. That's so cute. That's so fun. My, you know, my husband has said to me, don't you get tired of hearing that? I'm like, no, never. I think it's so fun. It's just a beautiful way to engage with others. For me, being a converted extrovert, right? Introverts, that would be like pure hell. Okay? My husband, that would be pure hell, right? Yeah. You're reading a great book, The Gift. Barb, that's exquisite. Bike riding, Elizabeth. I love it. Perfect with your time here, Doreen. I love that. Oh, they think you're a fairy, Abigail. That's so cute. Never heard back. Okay, I'm with you on the old boyfriend thing. And if that feels good, rock and roll. Let's see. What else? What else? Oh, hi, Pam. We're so glad you're here. So glad you're here. Perfect. Yep, even if it's just your coffee. And sometimes it can be like going out of your way and getting a little bag. If, you know, cost is an issue because I'm, I'm not cheap, I'm frugal, okay? I very much pay attention to what I spend. And a little package of decaf butterscotch coffee can be like a dream for the day, okay? It used to be cream for me. But I have a tendency to go overboard on cream, and then I end up, you know, eating 5,000 calories of cream per day, which does not benefit my health and well-being. So then getting a little bit of decaf coffee with some, you know, French vanilla or some butterscotch or mocha, that's just is a delicious way for self-care and to bring some joy. And little things like that go such a long way. Yeah, I love that people are saying welcome to you, Pam. Exquisite. All right, next week, topic is anger. I'm gonna... <laughs> and I'm going to approach it with embracing healthy anger. It's okay to embrace healthy anger. What does that look like? What the frick does that mean? Because we equate anger with violence culturally, globally. We really do. And I assert that many of us have learned to push away anger, be a nice person. We push away anger so that we create these reservoirs of anger so that when we actually do get angry, it's like a volcano erupting because we've been holding it in, holding it in, holding it in, um, and not holding our amygdala brain in check. And that's something I'm deeply working on. And uh, I'm getting some new ways to deal with that. So we're going to explore that next week. Okay, prizes. Somebody's about to win a prize. See if there's anything else I need to address. Abigail, I'm forever going to look at you like a fairy from now on. You're so welcome. Ah, rooftop gardening. That's exquisite, Aruna. And actually, go check out the Joy page. My husband with the gardening is his big thing in sustainability and bees. He does lives every Sunday, so go check him out. Same. 
Oh, you're so, that's so great, Wendy. Yep, I'm, I so get it. And you know what, Wendy? I'm, I'm going to add this. Today I found a new counselor. I've been in and out of counseling my whole life. I'm a huge proponent of getting support in counseling. Always have been. The mantra I've always given to our kids is, well, if the, the toilet is stopped up, we get a plumber. If the family is stopped up, we get a counselor. So it's the norm in our household. And uh, I actually, part of the things that I did today with my struggling is I said, you know what? I need somebody really sharp. I need somebody really smart that has a lot of skill, a lot of empathy that can help me unpack some of these things that I'm looking at. And I think I found her. And I had a conversation with her today. So who knows? I'll, and I'm not going to give up. I'm Wendy in that realm of counseling. I'm a huge proponent that you, if you have to change counselors, rock and freaking roll, find, you will know when it kerplunks, when they challenge you in a way that feels good, when they offer insights that you don't have. You'll know when it's time to find somebody new. And it's that's my time now. Yep, perfect. You are so welcome. Oh, welcome. First time or Cindy. Welcome. We're so glad you're here. Yeah, that's so cute. Perfect. Everybody's saying hi to you. Hey, Jersey Shore, newbie Lori. We're so glad you're here. Uh, I'm so glad, Ruth. Wonderful. And, you know, one of the things I do, too, on purpose, consciously, when people say inappropriate comments in the live, because there's not, I have no control over that. Like, if we're in a closed training, I have a lot more control to create safety as a setting. I don't have it here. So the reason, and like under normal circumstances, I would just let it go and not say anything. It just feels appropriate sometimes when I'm live here to address it when it's happening and practice and show, hey, don't do that, that's weird, I don't like that. To actually say that out loud without being a bee or without totally annihilating someone and for just setting good boundaries. It's very healthy to set good boundaries. Very, very healthy thing. Okay. All right. Prize. Who wants to win tonight? Okay. I've got a couple of masks. If you're choosing to wear masks, you might have some people in your life that are still choosing to wear masks because they have little kids and they don't want their kids to feel alone. Um, or you're looking at different aspects of the mask wearing. I really don't care. Please, please, please. I really don't. If you're inspired by the masks, I'm continuing to wear masks because I have grandchildren that are not vaccinated and um, there's many reasons why I'm still choosing to do that and that's fine. Everybody, each his own. Maybe you can give it as a gift if you don't wear masks and you're also going to get our forgiveness essential oil and we're so excited about it. It's actually 100% pure therapeutic essential oil. It's therapeutic grade. We had it created for us and um, I got to get all the ingredients so next time when we're actually selling it, I'll be able to tell you what's in it. I know there's some lavender and I know there's some sage in there. Um, it smells delicious and it's exquisite. So somebody's going to get all three of these wrapped up in a little package, shipped out to you. The only caveat is you have to be in the U.S. to win. You have to be in the U.S. So, <coughs> and what I typically do, and it's so not fair, sometimes you're lucky, sometimes you're not. I'm going to give you a phrase to type in. And the first person that types in the phrase or whatever I tell you to type in and it shows up in my feed, you will receive this gift in the mail. I'll pop it out in the mail. All you're gonna do here on Messenger is send me your mailing address as well as your email so you can track the, the, the package, track the, the mail delivery. Because um, sometimes you know the mail takes a while. That's just what's going on now. Okay, so who wants to win? Here's what I want you to do. You can do one of two things. You can either First person in my feed, it's going to look different on other people's feed. This is the part that's not fair. Okay, I know it's not. Just so you know, I know that you know that I know it's not fair. Okay, I'm going to have you put in something in the comments, and the first one that shows up in my feed gets it. So I just want to see a heart emoji. I just want to see a heart emoji. You can either put in an emoji or even write the word heart. First heart emoji for my sharing that this is what needs to come up in the feed is the prize winner tonight that gets a couple of minutes. Cat Moore, it's you, baby. It's you. Perfect. It's you. Yep, I see you guys are playing. I love that you guys are playing. Perfect. It's not fair. Remember I told you it's not fair, right? So what I need you to do, Miss Cat, let me see. We had it, let's see, it's Cat. 
what I need you to do, Kat, is put your mailing address, even if I have, even though if I have it, please put it in there anyway, and put your email. The only two people that see that information is me and Hailey, who helps run the office, and we'll get that sent out to you, okay? Um, all right, that's it. Next week, embracing healthy anger. What does that mean? What does that look like? Anger is your internal warning system. It actually can save your life. And when we don't listen to it, our anger gets distorted. And um, we act in ways that push people away from us rather than pull them towards us. So we're going to look at embracing healthy anger. Okay? Okay. Big love. I will talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.